work I'm going to present is an online scheduling algorithm for variable bitrate and interactive video streaming in UMTS networks. This is the presentation outline. I will introduce the UMTS environment and uh, some BBR video scheduling principles. Then I will explain the proposed algorithm, provide some numerical results and give some, some conclusions to this work. We know that UMTS network is able to provide the different types of services with different quality of service guarantees. Among these, video streaming is surely one of the most important ones. The main architecture scheme is represented in this figure with the challenge of provide real-time and real-time video streams with a relatively high bitrate and the goal to reduce frame losses, delays and jitters. Usually, the wireless streaming architecture considers also the RTCP feedback uh, protocol to um, provide usable information on the quality of data distribution with a fixed periodicity. This information is sent back from the client to the streaming server that is able to adapt the video streaming quality. This is an example of uh, an RTCP feedback packet structure. Among all the fields that you can read here, the free buffer space information is the most important one for our purposes. We know that a variable bitrate video stream is usually characterized by a high variability of its bitrate, as you can see by this figure. This traffic nature, together with the wireless channel fluctuations due to losses, interferences, uh, or noises, can easily bring to errors and losses. One possible solution is represented so by video scheduling. The scheduling is depicted in this figure and is a sequence of constant bitrate pieces always comprised between uh, this blue curve and this red curve. The first represents the data that are consumed by the client buffer, supposing a client playback at the generic frame time. So we call as buffer underflow curve. The red curve here is, represents the cumulative data to be received at most by the client buffer without overflowing the buffer. To avoid losses, the schedule that we call G has always to be comprised within the overflow and underflow curve. The proposed algorithm that we call the interactive video streaming algorithm regularizes the video data scheduled from transmission. The aim is to follow the highly fluctuating frame decoding speed due to external user actions, for example, pause or fast forwarding at different speeds. The aim is the minimization of the buffer overflow and underflow events that we can compute and call as total disservice time. To reach this goal, IPSA algorithm performs two key features. The first, the free buffer space is kept as much as possible at half of the buffer size, because this is a condition of equidistance between the buffer full and buffer empty condition. And then the RTCP frequency is dynamically varied or increased with difference between the calculated free buffer space that the algorithm can easily derive in each frame time and the so-called real free buffer space that is the free buffer space information brought only by RTCP packets to the server. To this aim, the first step that IVSA performs is to build a funnel, the so-called funnel, that is formed by a convex chain U and a concave chain V. This figure represents the steps that IVSA performs to build a funnel. This method is not new, it's not a novelty because it has been already introduced by other orders that proved also that the last variant transmission plan or schedule, what we called G, 
is always in the funnel. So the aim, also the aim of IRSA, is to maintain the scandal in the funnel. Obviously, the funnel construction must end whenever an RTCP feedback comes to the server because the free buffer space information is updated and so it forces also a scheduled recomputation. After I have built the funnel, IFSA generates the schedule. The scheduled bit rate that we call R is derived in such a way to guarantee half the buffer, buffer fill level or the pre-buffer space is the same in the time when the next RTCP feedback comes to the server. In fact, as we previously said, in this time, a new an updated free buffer space information forces a scheduler computation. The formula of calculation, computation of the schedule bit rate is quite easy to, to implement. Nevertheless, it could happen also that the schedule bit rate falls out of the funnel. The schedule bit rate guaranteeing half the buffer space. In this case, the only way to generate the less variant schedule is to follow the funnel edge and as soon as the funnel allows it to change the schedule bit rate so that this condition is guaranteed. Obviously, with this uh, implementation, the transmission plan is always in the funnel. But this is not enough. In fact, uh, the other step that IFSA performs is the dynamic RTCP frequency variation. Given the calculated and real free buffer spaces and TK, the time of the kth RTCP packet arrival, TK plus one, the time of the K plus one RTCP packet arrival, and delta B, the difference between the calculated and real free buffer spaces in the generic TK, IFSA is able to calculate the frequency, RTCP frequency, according to a simple law of proportionality, where the absolute value of delta B, the difference between the calculated and real free buffer space, obviously must be comprised between zero and the buffer size. So, given this calculation, the frequency and consequently the time of the next RTCP feedback can be easily derived. These constants can be found easily by solving this very simple system. In fact, when the difference between the calculated and real free buffer space is zero, the RTCP feedback, feedback frequency must be the minimum allowed by RTCP specifications and vice versa. In this way, ISA is able to follow the free buffer space fluctuations due to external user actions. Some, uh, some information about simulation setup. It says compared with the uh, two other online scheduling algorithms already known by literature, as Halloween and FOSS. They both aim to save bandwidth, but they have not been thought to, for, in, to inter for interactive video streaming. So, they not implement the RTCP specifications. Nevertheless, for fairness purposes, we implement the same a feedback frequency also for these two algorithms. But we set the frequency of RTCP feedbacks as the minimum frequency allowed by IFSA to better highlight the positive effect of a variable RTCP frequency of IFSA. Then a sequence of user actions uh, ranging from playback, pause and fast forward at different speeds is simulated until the stream end. Until the stream end. We call this as an action profile. Type and duration of, a, of each action are randomly chosen from a uniform distribution. We can see in this figure a comparison between the three algorithms, the proposed one and the other two previously mentioned, for six different video streams, all of length 70,000 video frames, approximately 45 minutes, and MPEG-4 coded with high quality. To stress the system, the client buffer is of a very small size, one megabyte. 
the constant feedback interval, constant for force and SL win, has been set of 10 seconds, and results have been averaged over 50 different action profiles to reduce the confidence intervals around the mean. By this graph, we can note that ISA outperforms both SL win and FOSS algorithms for all the considered video streams because of the main characteristics of IVSA. Here we can see a comparison between the three mentioned algorithms um, in terms of total service time versus the feedback interval. In this case, two, only two different streams have been considered, Jurassic Park and Soccer, because they uh, behave worse regarding IVSA. Again, the client buffer size is of one megabyte. The F mean frequency is a constant value for false and there is a win and is the minimum frequency allowed by its algorithm. Also, in this case, we can see that if the results are stable and uh, very small if compared with the false and there is a win and SL win ones. Nevertheless, Um, feedback um, total disservice time increases for SLWIN and FOSS with the feedback interval. This is obvious because a larger feedback interval means a slower reaction of both FOSS and LSWIN to external user actions. The same holds for the total disservice time versus client buffer size that ranges from 64 kilobytes to 4 megabytes. In this case, also in this case, if the results are very good. And the total service time remains almost unchanged for all the buffer sizes. Instead, regarding force and SLOIN, uh, total service time decreases with buffer size increase. Also in this case, the explanation is that uh, a larger buffer size um, allows to better manage free buffer space fluctuations due to external user actions. So what are the conclusions of uh, this work? The proposed algorithm is able to minimize uh, frame losses whenever a feedback buffer information is provided to the server from the client, especially in the case of interactive video streaming. The Two complementary key features implemented by IVSA are a buffer fill level capped at half of the buffer size and a variable RTCP feedback frequency. Numerical results show that IVSA outperforms the classical online scheduling algorithms in terms of uh, the total time of buffer overflows and overflows experimented during stream running. Nevertheless, this it has to be considered that this is a quite simple client-server model. In other words, further work should consider um, the network infrastructure that is also intermediate network buffer that can include, usually include delays and jitters in both forward and feedback channels. In this way, uh, the algorithm should be complicated to uh, adapt it to a more complicated and realistic scenario. Okay, that's all. Thank you for your kind attention.